So this is just the beginning of our pest management situation that we're going to have to do here in this greenhouse. In our goal to become less reliant on an unpredictable food system, we created this four season greenhouse. And now as we finish up on our first full successful winter and start planting seeds for this year's garden, we have encountered another opportunity to learn. Aphids. Aphids have a really cool life cycle. Their populations grow super quickly because the females reproduce asexually, giving birth to genetic clones of themselves and, get this, some are born already pregnant. Holy moly! In the fall, they change their strategy, reproducing sexually so they can give birth to males, so they can mate another time to produce the eggs that will overwinter. When it warms up in the spring, the aphids will emerge from the eggs and feed on the woody winter host, then move to their herbaceous summer hosts, aka your garden. Well, we disrupted this overwintering cycle when a few aphids hitchhiked a ride into our greenhouse last fall. They laid their eggs in the greenhouse instead of their typical woody hosts, and the eggs emerged much earlier because of the warmth in the greenhouse. The greenhouse also created a protective environment sheltering the adults and eggs from wind, snow, and cold temperatures, meaning some adults and a lot more eggs than normal survived the winter. Aphids feed on the plants using piercing and sucking mouth parts. They extract sugars and carbs and secrete the excess as a sticky honeydew. This feeding robs the plants of the energy they need to grow. Aphids carry plant diseases and viruses and the sticky honeydew on plant surfaces can host sooty mold. The honeydew also attracts ants that protect the aphids in exchange for this high sugar meal. There are a lot of ways to get rid of aphids. To control this population, we could thin out these lettuce plants here, removing the weaker looking plants and leaves that are easy targets. But we are about to start the seedlings for our entire year's worth of food that we're going to be planting in our garden. And we need to do that here in the greenhouse. Those juicy seedlings are just too attractive to aphids. So we have made the hard decision to clear out almost all of these plants that have been providing us food throughout the winter. In turn, getting rid of the aphids food source. Aphids are part of the garden ecosystem. We cannot get rid of them completely, but by pulling almost all the plants, we can get the aphids down to reasonable numbers to be able to start managing them. The aphids are not evenly spread throughout the greenhouse. The highest concentration of them is actually right here in this spot right here. Even on the same plants over there, we don't have many aphids. There's not as many on the onions. They are, however, on our kale, these lettuce, they're not as badly affected as the ones over here. However, you can see there are some pretty bad spots. The celery aren't actually that badly affected either. There are some aphids on them. The potatoes, we're actually going to leave them here um, to let them finish going. They do not have a lot of aphids. There is a couple on here and we will manually remove them. We are using these uh, plastic bags in order so that the aphids do not go everywhere when we yank them out of here, these plants out of here. And then Dave is going to... Chop it down. I wish that felt better. And then toss her outside. Yeah, straight out the door. So we're gonna do that for all of these big guys. Trying not to knock the aphids off, but it's hard. And they're all together like this. We're doing this chopping instead of pulling them out because if we were to pull them out, more likely we'd shake it a bunch and we'd lose a lot of the aphids all over the ground here. Now for the worst, the most affected area of the greenhouse, these plants right here. Whew, look at these radishes. There are some things we can salvage from here. This is gonna be a nice garden salad. I'll just put the tops in here. After we've taken the, all the plants outside, then we can dust off all the aphids, unless we want some extra protein. And these will all become part of a really nice meal. So we're not really losing anything. We're losing some growth potential to some of these things. Now all these green onions, this one's even flowering, but they have to go. These onions don't seem to have uh, aphids on them but they could be harboring eggs. Um, so we may as well just get rid of them at the same time. Now the lettuce. You start on the one end, I start on the other. Is there any more you can put? Eggs? 
We are saving the salary plants. We want to make sure that we get some seeds out of these guys. Our seed stock is depleting. We are transplanting these ones inside. We'll just manually remove the aphids from them because they are worthwhile keeping them alive. We had a lot of fresh celery this winter. It oh really yeah. Really nice, but look at in there. See those? Yeah. Diatomaceous earth bath for these guys. It's hard with our short growing season to get celery plants that go all the way to seed. These are a year old. These are over a year old. We started those from seed like last January. They should just grow like that. Yeah, probably. It's no celery. Snellery. Snellery. Safety first. You don't want to breathe this stuff in. We have diatomaceous earth here that we're going to use to cover all the remaining soil so that if there's any insects that fell off the plants, which likely there were, and if there's any eggs at the surface of the soil. Diatomaceous earth is essentially a bunch of little tiny seashells that are really, really sharp at the microscopic level, and they cut the exoskeleton of the, of the uh, insects and of the eggs. And so any of the remaining insects or eggs that are on the top of the soil, if they start crawling around on this stuff, they'll just be torn to shreds. We are not going to be getting rid of all the aphids by doing the manual removal and this spreading of the diatomaceous earth. So this is just the beginning of our pest management situation that we're going to have to do here in this greenhouse to keep all the levels of insects that we do not want here at manageable level. It's important that your soil is dry when you do this, because as soon as you get the stuff wet, it is no longer effective. Looks like it's snowing. This is not as effective on leaves because they can be hiding in many nooks and crevices, but this will just be a little bit of a help for us to control the aphid population on these potatoes since we are leaving them in here. We don't really have too much of infestation over here, but now that we've removed all their other food sources, they're probably going to try to find some more. The good thing about aphids is they don't see that well and they don't fly that well, so they don't really target plants. They just know it's, they got something good to eat once they've landed on it. And under the leaves. Ah, see? Get him. Same treatment to the celery. We have treated all of the soil in the greenhouse, including the ground, with this diatomaceous earth in hopes that any insects that remain and any eggs that remain will be eradicated. Look at that. Look at that. Let's see what we have here. This fresh white snow is now littered. With aphids. Little tiny aphids. Look at them. I bet the chickens would love this. Oh yeah. Chicones. You want this? Those are some happy clucks. This is going to be the last fresh kale bone of the year until the new plants come, okay? She loves her kale. That's it, that's it till June. These onions are not going to waste. We are going to dehydrate all of them and make onion powder. 